Someone has said that budgets are moral documents. This is true. Budgets reflect our values. They reflect our commitments. Budgets are indeed moral documents. But budgets are also stories written in numbers. Behind the numbers reflected in our 2020 financial statements and our 2021 budget documents, there's a story. A story of who we were as Mennonite Church Manitoba in 2020 and who we want to be in 2021. And an influ influential character in each of these stories is COVID. COVID-19 has made everything unpredictable for us. There's no one alive who has had to budget during a global pandemic like this. We'll see that COVID unpredictability in the stories of our 2020 finances and our 2021 budget projections. In the addendum sent out to delegates and available on the gathering website, there are three financial documents. First <clears throat> is the 2020 financial statements, then the 2021 general or main MCM budget, and then the 2021 CAMPS projections. When you look at the top over overview page of each of these, you'll see revenues listed first. This is the money received or expected to be received in order to pay the staff and operate the programs and keep up the facilities. Then after the revenues, you'll see expenses or expenditures listed. This is where the money goes to pay for the staff and the programs and the facilities. At the bottom of the page is the bottom line, the net result of revenues minus expenses. For a nonprofit organization such as we are, you want to see a number close to zero. We're not here to make money, but neither do we want to lose money. Once all the staff have been paid and all the programs have been run and the facilities have been kept up, you want that bottom line to be about zero. But here's where COVID rears its head. It made 2020 wildly unpredictable and it makes 2021 just as unpredictable, if not more. Take a look at the top overview page for the 2020 financial statement. Here you see the revenue received in 2020 for us to do what we've collectively agreed to do as Mennonite Church Manitoba. The big thing to note here is that our individual and congregational giving was down significantly compared to what we had budgeted, nearly $75,000 down in total. We suspect this was COVID related, but we don't really know. If your congregation had unusual giving patterns this year and you have a good sense of why, please feel free to contact me. The better we understand this, the more we can prepare for the future and the more we can support each other as congregations together. Next, you see our partner ministry support for 2020. Here you might note the difference between what was budgeted for Mennonite Church Canada and what was actually passed on for our collective work as MC Canada. As the note at the bottom indicates, this reflects an agreement between MCM and MC Canada to credit this amount back to MCM for past overpayment. Further down the page, you see our operating fund expenditures for 2020. These were lower than budgeted, especially the executive expenditures. This was due to COVID restricting travel and gathering in person, so minimizing expenses, as well as us being without a permanent executive minister for six months. With camps not operating fully and rental income down significantly due to COVID, we knew that we would have a deficit in 2020 for camps. So some difficult decisions were made in September to lay off staff with the hope of being able to hire them back once things eased up. This helped, but a deficit remained. An emergency government loan was secured to cover this deficit. However, the surprise of 2020 is the bottom line a surplus, even a major surplus. In the turmoil of 2020, it was difficult to see where things were at along the way. This surplus is the result of the diligent and difficult work done by, by staff at Camps with Meaning and the MCM office, along with higher than expected government subsidies and the lower than budgeted amount forwarded to MC Canada. All of this only became clear after the year was completed. Now, for a nonprofit entity like MCM, a surplus like this is a problem. It's a good problem, but it's still a problem. We're not supposed to have surpluses like this. 
However, I think we need to view this as God's provision, preparing us even for a year of famine. Because the reality is the story of 2021 looks at least as tumultuous as 2020. Let's look at that 2021 story. And to do that, let's start with the third financial document in the addendum, the 2021 Camps with Meaning Projections. We're starting here because this is where COVID shows up most prominently in our story. You'll see that we're not calling this a budget. That's because, as our counterparts in BC noted last week in their annual gathering, budgeting for camps during COVID is like nailing jello to the wall. There are just too many unknowns at this point to budget with any certainty. How quickly people will be vaccinated, exactly how and when regulations will be eased related to camps, how ready people will be to send their kids to camp or book retreats at camp, even after these things have happened. So the board has passed this not as a budget, but as a series of projections. And we have two example scenarios for how 2021 could play out for Camps with Meaning. The first column, scenario one, is a worst case scenario. This is what could happen if there are only minimal rentals in 2021 and staff layoffs need to continue as they have been. The second column, scenario two, is only a bad case scenario. This is what could happen if full rentals can resume in September and all staff return as before on September 1st. Both scenarios are assuming there won't be overnight camps this summer, but only day camps and pop-up camps. On the revenue side, then, you see a significant difference between these two possibilities. And on the expenses side, At the bottom of the next page, you see that in either scenario, our camp expenses will be significantly larger than our revenue. We'll take in less than we need to pay out. This means, of course, that no matter what happens, we're looking at a significant deficit, likely somewhere between $25,000 and $100,000. We've got a few strategies for dealing with this deficit. First, MCM staff and board are committed to keeping a close eye on things during 2021 to make any adjustments needed. Also, on the camp side of things, Dorothy and our camp staff are working hard to minimize expenses, which again means hard decisions around staffing. They're also planning a special fundraising program this year, which you'll hear more about. And they will be applying for grants from governments and foundations. There's actually some good news on that front already. We learned this past week that Camps with Meaning has successfully applied for a Winnipeg Foundation grant for $30,000 to help cover short-term operating expenses. God is already providing. Other strategies for dealing with the camps deficit come from the main MCM budget. Let's take a look at that now, the middle one of the three financial documents that you've got in your addendum. Here, under Revenue, you'll see an adjustment made based on 2020's lower congregational giving. When we move to Expenditures, you'll note the reduced amount budgeted to pass on for our nationwide work as MC Canada. This is another difficult part of our strategy to deal with our camps deficit. The other regional churches and MC Canada folks have been informed that we will be sending less on for our nationwide work than we would like. This will need to increase to normal levels next year. You'll also note that our regular camp subsidy is increased for 2021 and only for 2021. This is not actually to compensate for COVID costs, but rather to assist camps with meaning in making some staff transitions in 2021, paying a quarter of the cost of hiring a new bookkeeper for MCM, who will take over the camps books so that we can streamline our financial reporting and putting some funds toward creating a director of camps with meaning position later in the year. Both of these will benefit camps in the long run. When we look at operating expenses, you can see that overall these are budgeted lower than they were for 2020. Again, we can do that because we anticipate lower costs, especially related to travel and in-person gatherings. However, this is a bit of a bare bones budget, which will need to be upped once we are safely out of this pandemic. For 2021, though, it creates a surplus on the general operations side, which can then go to help cover the camp deficit. 
And now we move to the bottom line for 2021 and the end of our story. You see the camps with meaning projected deficit. This is taking the worst case scenario. And here's where the unexpected provision of 2020 surplus will help with 2021's overall deficit. Whatever the final deficit number actually is, we will be able to cover that remaining deficit with front funds from the 2020 surplus. I suggest that the, no the story these numbers tell is this, that even in times of turmoil and uncertainty, God has provided and God will continue to provide. We have capital expenses only alluded to in these documents, paying our portion of the HVAC replacement, paying for the mold removal and renovation of the studio, paying for new siding for the office building before pieces of it start falling on top of our guests. Yet again, we see that God has provided and God will continue to provide through our collaboration with our MC Canada colleagues, through our ready reserves and our 2020 surplus, and through the ongoing generosity of individuals and congregations to continue our work together as Mennonite Church Manitoba. We come together as a community of congregations seeking to be unified in Jesus Christ, living a biblical Anabaptist faith together presenting Jesus Christ to the world. We work together for this vision, committing our resources to this vision, because we believe that God has called us to it, and we believe that this vision can bring life among us and beyond us. And so we entrust our communal efforts to the faithful provision of a loving God. Thank you.